Room correction software, is it worth it? Do I use it? Should you use it? I'm gonna try and help answer these questions for you in this video. So the idea of using software to compensate for issues in your room, in your space, you know, low-end buildup, low-end canceling itself out, the idea of using software to help that has been around for almost as long as I've been making records. I remember hearing about different plugins and tools. I don't think I really tried anything with exception of some of the, the headphone modeler plugins that came out through the years. Uh, but there's something that I've always wondered about. I've always wondered if, if it would actually help me. I've also always been hesitant to try it for certain reasons. I'll get more into that in this video, but it is something I've always wondered about. I've, I've been curious about what the response of my room actually is, but I've, in all the spaces that I've ever worked in, my project studio, my different home studio or home mix rooms, I've never actually measured the accuracy or the response of my room. But recently the folks at Sonarworks were kind enough to send me this, their uh, reference for bundle with the mic and everything so that I could measure my room and try the software and see if it would help my workflow. And I actually have a couple free copies uh, to give away for you. So just watch to the end of this video for details on how to win one of those. So after going through the process, measuring my room, trying out the software, is it worth it? Do I think it's worth it or is it is it more confusing? Does it introduce more problems than it solves? Now let me just quickly explain what this software does. Basically it allows you to measure your room. So if you have the kit here with the mic, uh, it takes you through this, this kind of interesting cool process where you kind of hold the mic in different spots in your room, you move around and it basically sends some some weird signals uh, through your monitors and you know different frequencies kind of these weird swoopy sounds and whatnot and it measures you know what the frequency response is in all these different positions in your room most notably in your main mix position and then it creates basically an eq curve and it shows you you know what are the frequencies uh, that are building up where where is it lacking it just shows you the overall frequency response of your speakers in your room and the idea is if you know what that response is then you could essentially put an EQ on your final output that compensates for those. So if you have a whole, a big hole in your frequency response at let's say 250 Hertz, uh, and it's, you know, you're missing 10 dB of 250 Hertz in your listening position, well, then you could just put an EQ on your final output that boosts to 50 by 10 dB. And theoretically you've got kind of more of a flat accurate response. Therefore your mixes are going to translate better outside of the studio. You'll be able to hear things more accurately and make better decisions. Now I've been pretty happy with how my mixes have translated for a number of years now, since I really committed to my NS10 setup, I've been able to change to different rooms and really have minimal treatment that I've explained all that in different videos about why I've chosen certain gear and treatment that I have in this space, but my mixes translate well. I'm pretty confident that you know, and what I'm hearing here, I pretty much know what it's gonna sound like in the car or on the earbuds. And that's come from thousands and thousands of hours of just working on these monitors and just, you know, dozens and hundreds of different songs and projects, you know, that I've been through. So I've kind of got to the point where I know that things are gonna translate and I don't have a problem with translation. I'm not saying that I'm Superman or something. I certainly had plenty of translation problems in the past. I'm just saying right now it's not a problem. So. That's why I was really, really surprised to see the result that Sonarworks gave me. Cause I'm thinking, all right, my mixes translate really well. You know, I'm not, not often surprised by what I hear in different environments outside of my studio, but this is the measurement that Sonarworks came up with. So this is the response of my actual room that was measured with their mic. So you can see this was not a surprise, you know, my low end having a big drop off uh, around hundred Hertz. Again, I'm mixing on NSNs with no sub no surprise there. And that's kind of purposeful. But what surprised me here is this big bump around, you know, it's not giving me the frequencies here, but you know, I think it's around 140 to, you know, 200, 300, pretty big bump, at least, at least to me, you know, 60 B around in those frequencies. That's a pretty big deal. Now, uh, I've kind of asked some people about this. It turns out that this might just be the reflections off of my desk. Uh, and that's a pretty common area to have um, that big bump there. But then I've got a little bit of a hole here further out, maybe around 500. And then it's just pretty uneven in this min range, which is pretty surprising. Cause again, I'm mixing on NS10s and they kind of force you to focus on that mid range and get that sounding as accurate as possible. So again, when you look at the measurement that you get on a tool like this, it's a combination of the speakers, what they're actually putting out and also how your room is reacting. Uh, and then we've got kind of a nice trail off this, you know, the, the top part of this, the upper, upper mids and high end that, that seems pretty, pretty normal uh, for a lot of speakers. And we have a nice little trail off there, but I was pretty surprised. <laughs> I was pretty surprised. I was expecting to see a lot more of a flat response here. 
So then after I got this measurement, of course, I'm really curious to hear what it actually does to, to correct this and what that sounds like. So I'll demonstrate that for you now. So I've got this plugin on, but you can see my dry wet is 0%. So it's not actually doing anything right now. And then I'll gradually crank that up. So it's pretty drastic when you're listening to it. I'll just switch it on and off. I mean, it makes my it makes my speakers when this processing isn't on. It makes it sound like really dull and and muffled. Uh, and then by contrast, you know, with the correction on, it's it's almost kind of harsh and like kind of over bright. So I really like that they put this dry wet knob on there. I think that was really smart. You know, if I was uh, to use this, I'd probably, you know, kind of end up more in the 30 to 50% correction range. That might help me hear a little more detail, a little more evenly across the frequency range. Um, I totally get that. Uh, I would probably avoid doing something like this where you're trying to go for a totally flat response because I, <laughs> to my knowledge, I don't think there are any speakers anywhere manufactured in the world where you're hearing a flat response like that. So I think you would probably make some wonky decisions, especially in the high end. I think it's pretty common. They even have this predefined target curve where you know it explains that a lot of speakers out there, they do have like a, a natural trail off or a natural kind of downward slope uh, in the high frequencies, as you can see there. So you might want to play with that. But generally, I would just kind of go with maybe find a sweet spot on your dry wet knob here where it still sounds like it still sounds like listening to natural music the way you would on other systems outside of your studio. It gives you more confidence. I feel like you're hearing things a little more clearly. So after going through this process and seeing the actual response of my room and what the Sonarworks software does to correct it, am I using it? Am I going to mix with this from now on? Well, the answer is actually no, I've decided that at least for now, I'm not going to use this tool uh, in my workflow. And it's not because I don't think it's good or it doesn't make sense. Again, I actually think that it does help me hear a little bit more clearly what's happening in the mix and compensate for some of those issues that I, I do have in my room and my monitors. However, I have, like I said, mixed hundreds of songs on this setup, thousands and thousands of hours. It is ingrained in my mind that I, I just, I automatically know from what I'm hearing here, I know how to mix so that it's going to translate properly and sound competitive and sound, you know, on par with other records outside of the studio. So if all of a sudden, after all those years and thousands of hours, all of a sudden I turn this on, I mean, I might as well just pick up and go to a different room and just swap out for different speakers. It feels like I would have to just relearn my speakers from scratch. And again, I, I'm not having problems. If I was having problems and really struggling to hear things, struggling to get translation, then I probably would do this. However, again, I'm not having those problems, so why would I just try to retrain my brain for a problem that doesn't exist for me? That's why I've decided not to. I, I think it's a useful tool, but again, it basically would be like me getting new monitors and a new room and just relearning it from scratch. I'd have to put in all those hours again to really experiment and understand how this new sound translates out there. But even though I have decided because of those reasons not to use this tool, that doesn't mean that I don't recommend it or that I don't think anyone should use it. I actually think that this could be a, an extremely useful tool for certain people in certain scenarios. That's like three different scenarios. So number one, if you are someone who's fairly new to audio, to engineering, to mixing, or and or fairly new to your space and your monitors, then why not use this right from the beginning? So that as you're learning your room and learning your speakers, you have to do that anyway, why not start with this so that you're starting with more accuracy and that's how you're training your ears. So if that's you, it kind of makes sense to use a tool like this right from the very beginning. Scenario number two, maybe you're not new to audio or new to your space, but if you've really struggled with translation and with hearing things properly in your space for a long time and you haven't been able to solve that issue, 
then this could be something to look into. I remember for years at the old project studio I had, and I made plenty of records there, I really struggled to hear things accurately. The, the low end was pretty wonky in my room, even though I had a lot of treatment, bass traps, ceiling cloud, all that stuff. I remember when I was mixing, I would be sitting in my mix position, trying to hear the low end, and I was also mixing on uh, HS80s, which pumped out a lot more low end than these NS10s did, so that kind of exacerbated the problem. I would sit in my mix position and be mixing, and then I would have to go to the back of the room to like gauge the low end, because in the back of the room, it would like really thump, and I would kind of feel it in my chest, and I would try to like reference that against other mixes and see if I'm feeling the thump as much in the back of the room as I do on other records. Then I'd come back to my mix position and I wouldn't have that thump. So I really struggled. I, I Almost every mix I did for years, I took it out of that room and I didn't know how the low end was going to sound. Like I really had no idea if it was going to be too much, too little, too boomy, too muddy, whatever. I, I really struggled to hear things accurately in that space. So I think, you know, that this tool would have been really useful if I measured that room, if I had some correction, again, even if I was just using 30, 50% of it as I was mixing, I think that would have made a big difference and given me a lot more confidence in how my mix was going to sound outside of that space. So if that feels familiar, if it, it kind of sounds like your situation and you really feel like you don't know what you're hearing and you never know what to expect, even if it's been years, then this might be a tool that you want to pick up. And the third scenario where I can see this being really useful is if you're someone who's consistently working in different spaces. And I mean like really often, like in the, in the course of any given week, you're in this studio and then you're back home and then you're in that studio and then you're back home and then you're with headphones and you're constantly going to and from different spaces, even if it's just two spaces, like a studio where you're mixing on monitors and then you go home and you have to work totally on headphones. I could see this being useful. You can measure each space, use the, the headphone correction profiles that they give and really just give you more of a flat response in both locations so that you have more consistency so that you're not constantly like working against yourself by compensating for issues in room A, then going to room B and compensating for different issues and really never hearing things accurately. So in that scenario, I could also see this being a really useful tool. For me, I'm not in any of those three camps right now, so I've decided not to use it. I don't wanna have to kind of go back a bunch of steps and, and start relearning something new when I'm already getting results that I want. Maybe you're in that camp. That's where I'm at, but I am really glad that I got to try this out. It was really enlightening to just measure my room and see what the response actually was. And uh, I'm glad I had this because maybe I'll need it in the future. Now, like I said, I've got some free copies to give away. So Sonarworks is kind enough to uh, allow me to give away three licenses for their Sonarworks reference headphone edition. So especially if you're that person in camp number three, where you're going back and forth at different locations, or if you're someone who has to mix on headphones a lot, just because of, you know, maybe you're mixing at home, you can't be loud, you've got a baby sleeping, whatever it is, this could be really useful for you. So if you want a chance to win, just comment below on this video and just explain why you think you would benefit from having one of these free copies and I'll just randomly choose three winners. In the meantime, if you wanna hear more about why I'm so confident in my setup here in my room, then check out the studio tour. I talk about why I love the NS10s, why I get accurately translating mixes, and why I've made certain decisions with the room treatment in my room. So check that out to go deeper on all that stuff, and we'll talk to you later.